What's up guys, Ivan here with GetIvan.com and I just did a video on comparing web share residential proxies and so I was thinking, I've been thinking for the last couple hours about these packages and so in my last video I was just comparing the plans and talking about the different features. In this video I wanted to highlight the one viable model that I view here in the web share at static residential proxies for large scale scraping use cases. So this would be which plan can support large scale, you know, bulk scraping use case for, um, for the web share service. And it's going to be a static residential proxy with unlimited bandwidth here, unlimited bandwidth. When you sign into your account, you just come over here to subscription and browse plans and uh, then select this this one here and then you'll go to this option <laughs> and select your your now I would argue that you want to keep these features as low as possible if you want to rotate across a pool now from what I understand you get 5,000 IPS per month so you really have a very small pool to scrape through but i was thinking about this a great deal because in the grand scheme of a lot of other services out there you get you often will get a much larger pool and you get a finite number of concurrencies to scrape through that pool but there's also success rate considerations and so on and so forth so the way that the web share seems to work is pardon me you get a more finite pool and yes, you, you kind of have to throttle your own concurrency, right? Um, but you can, you can do so at a sort of lower rate, which allows you to access a kind of rotational method that is th that can be better than the shared model. So if I come over here to the shared model, what I have at the moment, or one, one, one aspect of my scraping process uses 2,500 proxies with unlimited bandwidth, which is pretty great. Even a thousand proxies is pretty great. Um, and you can do high concurrency feature here. This has a certain use case. And this is this is something that, that I use um, to a certain degree. Um, and if I, I was thinking about this in comparison to static residential bulk use case, and if the static residential features allow you to access 5,000 IPs and you would normally at a similar price only get access to a thousand proxies, then this this has a there's a unique sort of spectrum here. Whereas over here on the shared end, you can get larger access, you know, to your private pool. Like if it doesn't matter that you if you don't need to rotate, then you can actually get a larger, pardon me, a larger number of concurrency to specific proxy logins. Those tend to be like IPv4 data center level proxies. So that's the reason that you'd want to do that. You could technically have a more rapid access rate because you're able to access the pool more directly. But then there, if there's no rotations, then if the, if you're hitting the same sites, then you could get query burnout. And that's one of the reasons why I use the data center proxies to scrape variated IPs because it lets me do things quickly. I'm not going to access the same sites necessarily, generally over and over and over. So for low scale query, the, the shared proxies make sense. But depending on how rapidly you query the same kinds of sites at a certain scale, there is a justification over here for the static residential rotating proxy plan, you see, because you can actually get access to, you know, five times as many IPs in a tiny pool. And then, you know, in the last video, I was saying that 5,000 gigs is not enough. That's five terabytes. So it's not enough for if you're doing a lot, like I do, uh, or I tend to do I, in, in bursts uh, as a service providing, you know, B2B lists, very large scale scraping where I'll have like a IPv6 URL proxy that's querying things at a very large scale, pardon me. And then I'll have my data center proxies that, that scrape the variated URLs. And so my data center proxies, like a couple months back, I, they got up to like two and a half terabytes. And then, you know, my URL proxies are hitting a similar amount. So my entire plan is, is going higher than that, right? My entire strategy. But 
you know, if you're doing things at a lower scale than that, which is probably more common, then you actually don't need, like there's a huge price increase here. If you're looking at, um, if you're looking at unlimited gigs, normally I would just say you got to do unlimited because the last thing you want to do is, is have surprise charges, right? But 5,000 gigs, which is five terabytes is actually pretty huge for the average use case, but you need to be you need to be thinking about that and keep that in mind so you don't have any surprise charges. So you be very careful with that. But this is actually a pretty good number. And I would say that for the average person, this is a, a good price you know, decrease you could hit, 5,000 uh, IPs a month. And then this stuff, uh, it depends on your use case locations. I don't generally care about the location, but if it doesn't change the price, you could just say, now they're saying five worldwide proxies. So that means that that means that you're probably getting back connect proxies that that query into the pool and so you're getting like five access points you see that would be my guess let's see what happens if we set five here so it doesn't change the price so you might as well just go united states and then you don't need you don't if you're going to to access at a lower scale anyways and each concurrency is limited to five thousand or five hundred by default I would be questioning, is that 500 across all five access points or is it 500 per access point? Either way, like you would want to set something where it's it's going to if for for scraping purposes, especially I like to do one quarter of the total pool. So, you know, I rough I would maybe do something like you know, a thousand concurrency. Well, <laughs> it also depends on the, the server that you're using. If your server can even handle a thousand concurrency, because that's pretty hardcore. So, you know, usually I, I, I tend to limit things at like 200, 250, you know, per server query. And that's one of the reasons you, you want to have, you know, multiple servers, uh, whether it's local servers or VPS servers where, you're running things uh, with dedicated resources on on concurrencies. Like you, you, I have noticed that there tends to be an issue with larger quantities of con concurrency per server. The servers have to get beefier to even handle 500 plus. So, just something to keep in mind. Like it might be that you could just say, okay, let's do 200 uh, uh, threads per back connect proxy, and then that that could get you a, a pretty good ways. You know, it'd still take you a few hours or so to, well, it depends on how you're doing it. I guess if you're doing 50 concurrencies per back connect, then yeah, it, it might take you, um, let's see, it'd be 250, right? So I guess it, I, I, now another question I have would be, would it be every second that it rotates? I guess it would be, so... If you're running all of those back connects at the same time, then maybe 250 times 60, that's how many you're querying per minute. So, uh, and this is how many IPs you get access to per month. So you're kind of still stretching your legs across the total pool. You see what I'm saying? So you're really just, uh, you still have to, with whatever you're doing, you still have to be keeping your concurrencies as low as you can so that they don't burn out across the sample that you're hitting. You know, I might even do it lower than that, like 20 per thing. So I could keep it to like 100. And then if it's one query per second, then times 60, you're, you're hitting your entire pool every minute. So it's a it's a unique way of doing things. And that would probably be how you wouldn't need this feature. And that's a pretty good price to pay. Like if you were going to do if you were going to say, I want to try the static residential rotating method uh, with WebShare, then this would be the model that I would pick in order to test it. So before before you go and you you, you know, go wild with what I'm recommending, I would maybe select a lower model to save some money, like 250 gigs maybe. And and uh, that's about as low as you can pay just to test it. And, and I would make sure that um, the success rate is good to go. But to conclude, that is, the, that is exactly how I would structure it for scraping purposes. And uh, if you're interested in giving it a try, check out the link below this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.